So the first step to understanding and interpreting annual plans is making sense of all of the complexity that you see in the on the screen. So I know we've talked about this in class before, but it might be helpful, I thought, to do it in a video as well. So right now I'm looking at a PDF file of an annual plan. And as I scroll to the right, I see that there's quite a bit going on here. So let's start at the top left corner and work our way down and to the right. So the first thing you'll see over here is that um, on the top left that we have the starting Monday date. So this is the date across the top of the plan of the Monday at the start of each week. So week one of this plan looks like it started on June 3rd. So most likely, um, let's see, this was uh, an annual plan for a collegiate runner. You can see that at the top. And so most likely this plan is starting after this runner's last competition. Maybe they went to conference and they didn't make it out of conference, took a couple of weeks off, and then now they are back to training. So it starts in week one here. And then you see the months across the top as well, June, July, August, etc. And each of the weeks in those months um, marked with the date of that first Monday. So that's how you can orient yourself with this, within this annual plan. It goes all the way to the end. It looks like this annual plan ends the following April or early May. So yeah, it looks like conference was in May or is in May every year because this, this is a collegiate runner. And, and after conference, this athlete seems to have taken a few weeks of unstructured training or break before starting their new plan. So coming down a line, you can see that we have this, this um, row called competitions, uh, but we also mark big sort of calendar sections and seasons in this competitions area as well. There's also a place, for, um, a row for season. It looks like that wasn't marked on this plan. Uh, that could denote whether it is in season, off season, preseason, etc. And then the importance, um, this is a ranking of each of the competitions. So you can see that the most important competition for this athlete um, in the fall is the NCAA South Regional 10K race. So it's a cross-country race and it's regionals. What we're assuming is that, that this athlete makes it out of conference, makes it to regionals. This is where we're peaking because probably this athlete is, is maybe on the cusp of being really good, um, good enough to get to the championships. So we want to peak them here to get the, uh, this athlete individually or maybe as a team to the cross-country championships. That's why this is marked as number two in importance. Now, of course, this is a number one in importance as far as training goals go, because if you don't make it to the championships, then, uh, then you're not going to race at the championships. But in reality, the championships is, is the most important, you know, as far as prestige or accomplishment to this athlete. Uh, but our training priority is going to be regionals because we can't even race at the championships unless we make it out of regionals. Um, and so see, you see here that summer break is marked. We have a string of competitions. This would be the cross-country season for this 10,000 meter runner. We have a winter break, and then we have a series of indoor track meets followed by some outdoor track meets. And it looks like these track meets were not necessarily ranked, although they probably should have been. <clears throat> Okay, so going back to the left, so that's essentially how you orient yourself on the calendar. You have the calendar and the weeks above, and then you have the competitions and the season um, uh, headings right below that. Coming down from that, uh, now we start to get into this uh, section that, that we call monitoring. You don't necessarily have to have this. A lot of annual plans don't have this. Um, if you are a a strength coach who uh, bases a lot of your decision making on evidence and on data <clears throat> from your athletes and you do some athlete monitoring or if you're a sports scientist making one of these then you definitely want to have this in your annual plan. All of this is showing and it looks pretty sparse. This is just showing when we do um, what we call testing or monitoring of the athlete and right here SPEC stands for Sport Performance Enhancement Consortium. That's, that's an um, <clears throat> That's from when I was at ETSU um, at the Olympic training site. That's what we called our testing, and that's what we call it now at Point Loma as well. So this just means that in this week one, we're doing some spec testing. We're putting this athlete through a battery of tests to assess their physical and, and uh, physiological capabilities. And then over here, we're doing it again at week 15, week 26, week 32, 
etc. We probably should do it after conference as well. Now, we I have um, rows for some other things as well, recovery, nutrition. Um, it looks like there's nothing in the recovery row. What you could put in um, are novel recovery um, options. So it, it seems like in the literature, uh, it seems like novel recovery modalities have the most benefit both uh, may, maybe physiologically, but definitely psychologically for athletes. So what we might do is put in, you know, some ice baths or some massage here before the start of the season after an arduous uh, buildup in in uh, training volume and intensity. We might put some here um, surrounding their regionals and conference and uh, the regional competition and their and their uh, national championship. We might put some novel. Um, uh, sorry, blinking. Recovery modalities over here before conference. Okay, so that's all that that is. All right, now moving down from that, we have two different sections. One separating their running training from their lifting training. Now, because this is an annual plan that is intended to be a guiding document for this athlete, not necessarily their um, showing them their daily, very detailed training uh, workout for that day, we can. Uh, we can get away with just putting in some some basic figures. So when we're looking at this running section, we have training phase. So this is the uh, phase of training that should guide how the rest of that training goes within that mesocycle. Uh, this is we have a mesocycle row. So here we have in this general preparation phase, we have two mesocycles: general or uh, general endurance slash speed and aerobic slash anaerobic support. So these are just names that I had come up with for endurance athletes uh, because we need to get um, some endurance prep but also some speed prep. So not top speed um, or lactic acid type workout workouts but more like neuromuscular uh, preparation for the speed to come later in the season. season. Um, and you can see that they have the number of sessions that they're running per week. It goes above seven over here because uh, the athlete will start doing double days on some days, running in the morning and in the evening. And then you see their mileage per week. So the mileage per week is going to fluctuate, obviously, but it will also increase over time. Now, if we look down to the graph, I, I don't think you can see it on here, but I believe the gray is their mileage. So you can see it goes up and then it dips a little bit when they recover. Um, you know, they take a down week in volume to recover and then it goes up again and then another down week, so on and so forth. And it kind of peaks right here. And if we go up, it looks like it's peaking. This might be offset a little bit, um, but it, it's peaking right before their active rest, which is good. They take a little active rest, um, or here's the active rest right here. This is their highest mileage week, 110 miles that week. And that's where it peaks. And you can see that we um, as we get nearer to those big competitions, we're actually dropping volume a little bit. Um, and you can see that up here in their taper. Okay, so that's kind of how to read that part of it. Moving down from that, we have the lifting section. And this is what most of your annual plans will focus on. Um, this, uh, obviously for runners, lifting is, is far secondary to running, but we it kind of takes up more space. And as a strength coach, you know, you're, you're less concerned about what they're doing in practice, although it should definitely influence what you're doing in your lifting sessions. Um, but your domain is kind of this lifting um, section of the annual plan. So across the top, I have, again, the, the um, training phase and then the mesocycle name. So we're going to go from strength endurance, right? We grow those muscles bigger, hypertrophy, and then into a strength phase. We teach that new muscle how to be strong a strength slash power emphasis where we now maybe we have an equal focus of strength but then also some power as well higher velocity strength um, and then as we go we come back into strength after the active rest from the weight room strength power and then what's called a concentrated load CL refers to concentrated load it's just a a periodization term um, meaning a higher volume of heavy uh, strength training and then into a taper where we reduce volumes but keep the intensity high before their big time competitions. All right, and that and that basic cycle will repeat itself during track season. Although we get very specific in the track season, um, 
you know, more specific to 10K training because that's what this athlete's specialty is. And uh, you can see some, some different um, mesocycles. So like power speed over here, which is the first time we really get to that um, fitness characteristic. Um, yeah, so that's how to how that's how to read that part of the lift. Um, and then going down further, we have the sets times reps for that week, as well as session A, B, and C. So it seems like this athlete was doing three sessions in that week, um, per week. So week week one, week two, week three, week four, and on each of those four weeks, sessions A, B, and C were the same. That's why we have it written across the rows, or sorry, across the columns like this. And and in general, it's a good practice to keep your training the same um, for each day of the week, meaning, uh, well, meaning like Monday to Monday on each of those Mondays, if you're training that day, it should be the same uh, exercises, the same sets and reps, unless you're progressing and adding a set um, to increase volume or adding reps to increase volume or adding load. But the exercise selection and order should remain mostly the same. And this allows athletes to um, improve their technique at these at these exercises before moving on to another to get the most out of that before switching. So you can see A, B, and C, we have clean technique, back squat, walking lunges, and overhead press. These are all just um, abbreviations. Then the second session of the week, snatch technique, snatch pull, mid-thigh snatch pull, bent over rows. And then again, we're going back to clean technique, but with front squats instead of back squats, mid-thigh clean pull, and it looks like that's a weighted pull-up. So those are this athlete's three sessions for the week with their average weekly intensity of load below that. And this is going to be a relative intensity. So it's not intensity of one repetition max. It's a percentage of the intensity of the <laughs> one repetition max or, or a percent of a percent. So if they're training for sets of 10, they're probably training at about 65% of their 1RM. They're starting off at 80% of 65%. It's just another way of moderating volume when you're not training to failure. And then we have in the orange, this is a calculation of their volume load. So volume load is going to be sets times reps um, times intensity. So it's a relative volume load. So this is this orange line is indicative of essentially how much effort they are putting in to their training. Um, so yeah, that those are all of the rows that we've gone through. Hopefully that helps you to understand this annual plan. You can take a deeper look at it yourself, look at some of the trends, how are we progressing these exercises as they go along. Um, and what I will go ahead and do is stop the video and post another couple with other examples as well as how to get started creating your own. So be sure to check those videos out as well.